All right, welcome to another episode of From the Helm with Marine Max. I am your host, Lisa, and he is your other host, Kelly. Right. And we are coming to you today. Make sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook at Marine Max Leisure, on Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, and on Twitter at Marine Max. We are bringing you all the great boating news to keep your inboxes full and keep you entertained. And be sure to drop your questions and comments below. Uh, today's boating broadcast, we have a very special guest. This is the Bermudez family. And they have spent a lot of time in the British Virgin Islands. So we're going to learn more about the islands with them. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for having or coming to us. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. All right. So there are a lot of you. So let's let's <laughs> go uh, kind of around the horn here. And why don't you introduce yourself and, uh, you know, give us something, you know, how old you are and, and how many times you've been to the British Virgin Islands. I'm sorry. You're the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you my age. You, <laughs> you don't have to tell us your age if you don't want. I am Raul Bermudez, uh, VP of Marine Max Vacations. Uh, happy to be here with my uh, family. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Mama Bermudez. My name's Kelly, and um, I'll let you. I'm not going to say my age. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Uh, my name is Adam Bermudez. Um, I am 24 years old, and I think I've been to the British Virgin Islands somewhere around 10 times, uh, somewhere in that, that number. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I nice. am Sarah Bermudez the second. I'm 22 years old. I just graduated from St. Louis University, um, and I think I've been 10 times as well. <laughs> wow. Awesome. I'm Lauren Ramirez. I'm 19, and if they've been 10 times. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, since I was three. Yeah, so. Wow. Hi, I'm Alex Ramirez, and I'm 11, uh, 12. <laughs> and uh, I've probably been like five or six times. Wow. That's awesome. And yeah, you kind of start forgetting what what age you are is you know the older you get. So that's how it goes there, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kelly, how many times have you been to the British Virgin Islands? Yeah, we were talking about that this morning. We've probably been uh, at least twenty times. I would say we've been. Wow. Um, that's me. Uh, my husband obviously has been way more. <laughs> sure, his, um, his home away from home. Yes. Yeah. We have gone as uh, fr with friends. We've gone with family. Um, we've gone with this family and, uh, you know, a couple times a year, you know, maybe we've gone with, with work a couple of times. So it's, it's been at least 20 times that we've, we've gone together as husband and wife. So yes, I, we were t discussing this morning that uh, we just celebrated our 27th anniversary, and we've been going to the BBIs for 22 years now. So most wow. wow, we've been traveling to the BBIs. Yeah, well, wow. I had to bring, uh, so I was telling uh, Lisa, I had to bring the image in, and you just mentioned it. So here, we'll, we'll bring it in here. Um, happy anniversary to you, too. It's the 27th anniversary today. So very cool. I saw the picture, and we were like, we have to use that image. So that's <laughs> terrific. And how old were you in that picture? <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> that is so great so can you tell us uh, what are some of the um you know the experiences you had back in the day in the british virgin islands you know the first few times you went there what were your first impressions and how does that kind of linger still today yeah. Me? Oh, all right well you know i was a little nervous in the beginning because my children were so young at that that point and we had not really um been on boats that much prior to them um, being babies we kind of grown up with boats but you know of course having children is um a little bit different and they just it was amazing to me i'm remembering back to the first time we went her being three years old it was amazing to me how they just kind of settle in to the life of, of being on the water and it's you know, they would relax and um, just enjoy themselves, enjoy the time together. Um, you know, I, I remember yep. being tiny. This one was 
11 months old the first time. That was the worst. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he cried the whole time. I didn't know that one. <laughs> Adam, what were, what were some of your uh, your impressions when you went down as a, as a young child at the time? I mean, I look back on it now, I was probably 10 years old the eight, first day, eight, eight, eight years old the first time I went down. So at this point, it's just, it's become like part of who I am as a person. Like I'm always more calm and relaxed on the water. Um, I'm always dreaming about being in the BVI's. Like it's my background, it's my pictures, it's it's my happy place. So, it's it's literally been engraved into who I am. Pretty cool. That's great. And Raul, um, as as a parent too, um, bringing uh, as Kelly mentioned, bringing younger children down to a place like the British Virgin Islands. You know, how did that how did that go, and and how did you kind of just get acclimated to it? So yeah, I'll answer the, the first part of your question. How have the beating eyes changed over the years? So the first time we went, it was just Kevin and myself. Uh, it was actually a cell before Kit. No, we had one. We had two kids. No, we had two. We had yeah. two kids, but we left them with grandma. And um, you know, part of the beauty of the BBIs is that it's not over commercialized. It really hasn't changed that much. The airport has been extended, so you get a little bigger airplanes, but the whole way of getting there the way of life, every, everything's relaxed, the beach bars, you're not dealing with a whole bunch of condos everywhere. Really, that part of it, and the people are as friendly as ever. You end up becoming friends with a lot of the people. You, you go back and see the same people, whether it's the same captain, or you go to your favorite restaurant, and the, the owners are there, or there's you know, Kelly's favorite place, um, uh, what's his name, Ivan's. Uh, so, so I've been stress free bar in Yos Van Dyke, and we go see Ivan and say hi. It's amazing. So that part is great. The uh, second part of the question, go with kids. The first time I was actually nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to have fun. I'm going to be stressing out of what they're doing, not doing, <laughs> bringing all their life jackets. I did have a rule: you couldn't move if the boat is moving. You have to have a life jacket on. That was not optional. <laughs> yeah. So we did that, and then, you know, as they get older, there's, you know, in the boat, especially with the Marine Max boats, they're so big, you can lose them. I, I think I lost Alex once. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, where is he running up and down or around? And we're like, oh, my gosh, maybe he fell over, but he was in one of the cabins taking a nap under a bunch of blankets. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> lots of storage space on those on those boats. <laughs> Yeah. Your kids so, but it's it's great. They uh, they enjoy it. I mean, a couple of years we give them a choice. Hey, you want to go skiing or you want to go to the BBIs? That's the uh, choice. And that's I mean, <laughs> we have gone skiing with them, and so they knew what the difference was. And the next year we're back to the BBIs. No, that's great. <laughs> Lauren, uh, she just graduated high school a year ago, and uh, before going to college, she gave her a choice. Hey, where do you want to go? Where in the world? You get to pick where we go. And what did you pick? The BBI. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So Sarah and Lauren, uh, tell us your experiences uh, kind of growing up in this world of paradise. Uh, it, tell us about your first experiences and how it's kind of changed you uh, growing up. Uh, yeah, kind of like Adam was saying, uh, I definitely feel like it's part of who I am. Um, I'm very comfortable with boats now. Some of our past crews we've had taught us how to tie all the boating knots and whatnot. So we know how to work our way around a boat. Um, I remember the first time stepping on one, getting the um, briefing on how to walk around the boat, how to flush the toilets, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And now it's like second nature. We don't really need the briefing. We can teach other people how to do it kind of thing. And like at six years old, my first trip, learning all that stuff was kind of cool. And the fact that it was so new and a lot of people don't get to do it, it's something, it's not those rules that you hear from your parents and you're like, okay, like, this is annoying, but it's like, this is so cool that I actually kind of want to follow the rules because I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> more the boats. Um, and then again, like my dad was saying, getting to know the locals, I think one of my favorite parts is seeing the kids, the local kids. Um, I'm definitely a person. I'm elementary education degree. I just graduated with it. So seeing the local kids and getting to hang out with them is definitely some of my favorite activities. Um, and Very cool. growing up, I've been called like the little local 
Islander, like <laughs> running around Super Japan. So. That's great. What, what about you, Lauren? I mean, we've all been going since we were babies. So, I mean, how many of your friends could just say that they grew up in the British Virgin Islands? And as a teenager, especially, when you're in the BVIs, you completely even forget you have a cell phone. And being so attached to that in the real world and all the social media and all that stuff, when you're in the BVIs, it's like a whole different world. And I'm so appreciative of growing up that way. And yeah, I think we all definitely have like a connection to the ocean now. And one of my favorite memories is just waking up in the morning, like peeking my head out of the window and just looking at the ocean. So, yeah. That is that is terrific. And, uh, and last but certainly not least, Alex. So basically your entire life, you've grown up knowing the British Virgin Islands and Marine Max vacations. And tell us about, you know, how has that changed you growing up? Um, I don't know. I guess it's just sort of <laughs> brought me closer to my family in a way. And because we're always spending time together and we don't have our phones and stuff. That's great. Wow. You. That was good. Wow. <laughs> no. yeah. well, well, it's it's so special that you guys share this and you've shared okay. it since, you know, the beginning. Um, and like you've all mentioned, having, you know, being secluded on a boat, it's social distancing. You're in a small space with each other for what, what seven to 10 days? I mean, you've got a pretty big family. So how was how is the how does everybody get along the whole time? It's amazing. You know, it takes a couple of days for this one to settle down. <laughs> so I usually send him ahead of time and let him work and settle, and then we come after. But sure. Um, what I really loved is from the beginning. I mean, now there is Wi-Fi. You know, there that is allowed on the boats. When we first began going, there there was no Wi-Fi on the boats. You had to turn um, your phone off. You had to you turn got, your phone, yeah. Fine. But, you know, we always made it a rule that there were no electronics um, from the very beginning because they always had their Game Boys and all of that for the airplanes. But, you know, they never missed it. And that's what I love is we just would connect. You know, it doesn't really even take that long. You breathe in that that beautiful tropical air and, you know, you're out in the in nature um, and it's it's just a, a very relaxing, your family just seems to settle in very quickly, which um, and it's always amazing because it's not, you know, you have the typical stresses of life when you're at home, but when you get there, it's just like you get on island time really quick, it seems. I yeah. Think, I think also too, being on a boat uh, together, you know, it, you're, you're together, what, what, time, what type of teamwork uh, comes out of that. I think as a family, especially, you know, you learn to work together, you're all in it to do the same thing, which is enjoy yourself and get from this point to this point. How does teamwork, how does that uh, play into the whole experience? Yeah, I mean, everybody has uh, uh, something to do, right? So whether it's today's your day to make breakfast and, and if you're making, if you're cooking, then somebody else has got to do the dishes and somebody's in charge of the dinghy. Uh, so everybody's got a different job. Where there's water toys, making sure we tie up the dinghy at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so everybody's got a little shore. So so yeah, everybody works together. I Mom we, does a lot of the planning. I think we saw a lot of that with our last trip when we went with um, my soon-to-be in-laws. Well, I should should be already in-laws, <laughs> but. That was postponed, uh, but we went with them and that was another four. And we've gone with other families before, but we were like really interconnected on the boats and having dinner with each other every night. So there was like a lot of dishes, way more than I can ever remember being on a trip. <laughs> there was just, we had one chef, one a cap, two captains, and a lot of that work had to kind of be done by us for two boats. So. Sure. It was mandatory to be able to work with not just our family, but also the other family and the captains just to be able to make sure the boats didn't crash or didn't <laughs> the, the food got put away and everything was cleaned up. But it, yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're also the, the relationship building that something like that can provide um, not only with 
one family, but then you're talking about, you know, your, your future in-laws. So you're building relationships with these, these other individuals. And I think it's, you know, especially just siblings too, just being on a boat together, you're going to be looking back when you're our age, you know, when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, and just sitting there saying, you know, it was a great opportunity to connect with, with your siblings too. Yeah. Not many people get that opportunity. Yeah. I think, in a lot of ways, it, it takes us back to the basics every time we're there, um, whether it's bringing out a deck of cards or an old board game that we haven't seen since we were young. That's like normal for the, like a nightly activity on the boat is to whip out one of those old games. Um, so base, like bringing it back to the basics and I don't know, creating like a younger version of ourselves on the boat and we all, we all talk about we're going to do family vacations with our kids together one day we're going to have our honeymoons here <laughs> we already have plans for the future together in the DBI so sure. that's, awesome. oh, that's so fun all right so let's let's talk about some of the actual places to go that I mean uh, I know what I've seen online and I know kind of the places I've been um but Adam, what do you do? You have a favorite location? Maybe it's an island. Maybe it's a snorkeling spot. Uh, yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, personally, if I could spend a year and a half in Yost Van Dyke in White Bay, just mm -hmm. on one of those little huts that they have built, that is my ideal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I that actual island, that bay, that harbor is. To me, the most calm place in the island, it's the most relaxed of the most relaxed place on earth. This is a <laughs> relaxed island. Um, so I, I having one of those painkillers. That's that is what I dream about. I have a picture on my desk of Yost Van Dyke stress free bar, and that's where I, I try to manifest myself every day. So. He did not have those when he was ten. <laughs> <Why would I? laughs> Of course not. And I just have to say, too, while uh, while you guys discuss this, I, I'd like to bring up some stuff on RemaxVacations.com. And if you guys want to learn more about, uh, you know, the experience down in the islands, check out RemaxVacations.com. Also on Facebook, you can check out Marine Max Vacations and, and just learn more about. And I'm sure you'll probably see a few images of the Bermudas family because uh, anytime they get down, they, they get, get some great shots down there. So So check it out whenever you get a chance. All right, I've got to agree that U.S. Van Dyke is one of my favorite places to go oh, to. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, what about you? Um, that's a hard one, but <laughs> <laughs> I love the baths, especially. I love walking through and just going through all the rocks and in the little crevices. And it's just amazing to stand on the top of a rock and look out at all the water and all the different islands. It's like such a breathtaking sight and no matter how many times you go you'll never get used to it so. no i have to agree and raul can you give us a little background about the baths for people that don't understand what what this is uh just kind of elaborate a bit sure so i think it should be one of the natural wonders of the world it's volcanic these massive volcanic rocks and it's created uh pools within the rocks and nobody knows how they got there because there isn't a volcano anywhere near there. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. Um, it's hard to describe. You really have to go down and take a look at it. It is a national park for the Virgin Islands. It is. It's. It's amazing. But it's. It's. It's ancient. It's been there hundreds of years. Um, we have videos of it. But again, oh, and the water is so crystal clear. We're yeah. Pictures in there. People think it's fake. Where we show them the pictures when we come back. It's just out of this world. And I don't want anybody to miss the top of the baths, which there's a restaurant with a pool up top. And so a lot of times people don't know about that. It's a little bit of a hike up there, but it's um, but it's very doable. Oh, there you go. You've got there you go. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a just a saltwater pool up there. And the kids, I can remember them playing, going under this little bridge that's, that's there. And, we have a picture from every time we've been at the top of the baths. It's just breathtaking. And there is a restaurant, so you can yeah, you have can a couple eat. of drinks after your hike. And the view, yeah, the view up there is just uh, incredible, too. Just looking down at pretty much uh, the Sir Francis Drake Channel, you can kind of see yeah. just throughout once you get to the top. Yeah, what do you guys think of the baths? What, what are some of the things you like to do there? 
I love the baths. There's also a few little like secret, not secret, but a lot of people <laughs> don't know to snorkel there. Um, ah. Really not a snorkel mask, um, even because a lot of the times you have to swim from the dinghy to the shore to get up on the island and mm -hmm. putting a snorkel mask on in, you'd miss a lot of things if you didn't throw it on there. So over the years, we've learned to do that. Um, but I don't know. I think it gives just a really great sense of adventure, which is what I'm all about. So I love climbing on top of the rocks. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. One of my favorite places as well. Nice. When I get nervous when they're on top of the rocks and they want to jump in, I'm like, nervous? <laughs> Seems like everybody wants to do that, you know? It's it's hard not to. But I mean, yeah. just look at that. Look at just look at that, though. I mean, where else on earth can you see something like that? Um, and you know, coming from America, it's not too far. I mean, it's a hop, skip, and a jump by plane. Yeah. yeah. All right, Alex. Do you have any other favorite spots? Um, I like Monkey Point. It's a snorkeling spot. Nice. It has a lot of cool fish and. We saw a turtle there, and we were swimming up next to it one time. It was cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is. Uh, so I've only been snorkeling a couple of times uh, when I was down there, and it is an amazing experience uh, to be surrounded by all those beautiful fish. And it's it's amazing because the water is so clear. You can see for miles. It's, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen I, octopus, um, squid. Um, what lots else? Yeah, lots of sea turtles and tarpon. Tarpon. Yeah, <laughs> we'd we'd love to hear. So, what are some of the sites? I mean, uh, I, in in terms of nature um, in the the British Virgin Islands, it's clearly a, a a crazy ecosystem with you know fish and birds and everything. What are some of the things that you can come to expect if you come go down there just to see on a daily basis? goats in the street. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I can always remember waking up to roosters yeah. and goats uh, in the hills. Um, when you're in a, a very calm harbor and you wake up with that Bad. quiet. Yeah, you wake up with that that sound. I don't, I don't know. There's something about that morning sunrise. I always wanted to get up before the kids so that I could have that quiet time just listening to the birds. birds. And the uh, yeah, the roosters. These are crazy looking lizards too. <laughs> <laughs> you you bring up a good point too, though. The when waking up out there, especially like on a mooring ball or something, kind of ex could you guys describe that feeling when you wake up and you kind of look around, and you realize where am I right now? That it that never feels real, honestly. It always feels like a dream the whole time that you're there. At waking up in the morning, it's just the mundane of your life, of the nine to five, of the grind, it's just, it, it's gone. Um, to me, waking up there is, that's, that's, that's the idea. That's, that's where you, that's the happy place. I don't know. Yeah. It's the best. To journal um, every morning, I would journal what we had done the day before. And um, it was just such a, it's so beautiful to look back at those memories now um, of everything that we've done together as a family. Um, but those mornings are, you know, everybody waking on the road and getting that breakfast. Um, you know, usually it was this little one getting up first with me, having yep. food together, and then the other ones rolling out. But it, it just really is. It's Adam says that our happy place. It, it truly is a, a little slice of heaven being in that peacefulness because there's not a lot of noise. There's not a lot of distraction. There's not a lot of people, um, you know, to be honest, it's, it's really just you guys in the water and the few boats that might be around you um, that sometimes you see from Harbor to Harbor as you, as you go, um, you will see some of the same boats and uh, it's kind of cool to make friends as well. What's amazing, too, is, you know, teenagers, right, when they're home, they want to sleep in all day. And there they actually get up and want to do the same thing. They, you know, if I start cooking bacon, they all get up. and <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a good way to get people up. Quick alarm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh what, about that, 
Uh, wait, you know, you said that when you see other people as you go from place to place, have you guys made lifelong friends just being down there? Uh, people that you kind of remember for throughout the years? Andy and Geraldo. Yeah, some of the crews <laughs> and then some of the people at the, the, the base, yes. the operations, we definitely friends with them. Yeah. And then other customers, we've stayed, yeah, we've, we've met people. In fact, the very first time we went, we, uh, believe it or not, it was a cabin trip. And we were with two other strange couples we didn't know, and we still stayed in touch with them. It was pretty neat. One was from Germany, I remember. Yeah. And it was, yeah, that was that was really cool. I mean, over the over 22 years, you kind of lose touch with some of them, but <laughs> um, but just very very special memories about the the people, the islanders. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going to Anagata, it's always the same people, the same families. Um, that you're seeing when you're going there. Uh, Raul mm -hmm. seems to know just about everybody there. <laughs> so many times, but uh, yeah, the taxi drivers. Yeah. We, yeah. We, so could you give some people, what, what is that experience? So you get off the plane, you're in paradise. What happens then if you're a Marine Max Vacations customer? You get a shot. That's my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> you get off the airplane, they hand you a nice cold. That's mouth. true. That's true. I was like, do we take these? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Thomas. See, experience obviously has changed as the kids have gotten older. Like yes. for sure. this year, <laughs> this year, for the first time, we all the whole family went to the Willie Teams, which is a famous floating bar in Norman Island, which is a little different experience. It was, I was like, wow. Things yeah, are right. That's the word. <laughs> but tell them what you, you know, we get off the plane. No, so the experience yeah. is you, you can get there one of two ways. So what Adam was talking about is if you fly it through St. Thomas and then you can get a 45-minute ferry into Tortola, the British Virgin Island. Or you can fly, which is I like to do, is straight into Tortola from Puerto Rico. So you can take, for example, for us from Tampa, you can take a direct flight to San Juan and then get on a smaller plane into Tortola. But you can't go through San Thomas and then take a ferry, which is actually very nice because once you're on the ferry, you're pretty much on vacation already. Mm -hmm. We prearrange the whole thing with our vacation planners. They'll also pre, if they know when you're coming in, they'll prearrange your uh, taxi transfers. So there'll be somebody there with, you know, name. Uh, same uh, Marine Max, and then they'll take you straight to the base. So you can pre-book those, pre-arrange it, and, um, and then you get to the base, and then you'll be greeted by our great staff. We have the best staff in the industry, and then they'll take your bags. They'll take them to the boat while you start doing the briefing. You can pre-order your food, too, which is fantastic because it'll already be on board, so you're not wasting time shopping. Some people still like to go shopping, but... And I always, as a mom, I felt very safe um, because I was picked up directly at the airport. Our bags were loaded on and, you know, it just felt very secure. Um, that trip, um, a lot of times the taxi drivers will kind of give you a little history. You're looking, it's such a beautiful drive over to the base um, through mountains. You're going up and, and down through the mountains uh, there. And I always, I just, I always felt very, you know, safe getting to the base. So that's, that's an important thing for moms, I think. For There's sure. a lot of big personalities with those taxi drivers too. <laughs> they, they can make you laugh the entire yes. way there. That is awesome. And uh, so, so once you get there, you get all settled. Uh, you know, what are some of the things that people should know before heading out, uh, leaving, leaving base? You know, should they? Um, grab some stuff at the grocery store if they haven't, you know, just to pick up some things that they might have forgotten along the way. And also, I, I and I'm just jumping a little bit. Let's say beforehand, also before they leave, what are some of the things that they should know when packing for this trip too? Yeah, pack light. Yeah, <laughs> girls, what do you bring? Swimsuits. Yeah, swimsuits, <laughs> cover ups, one player flip flops. Mm -hmm. Don't. Yep. Have but you don't need makeup. No, you don't need a blow dryer, no. even though there is there is electricity. But you, you you'll never use it. You just the wind is your blow dryer. Um, you flip one pair of shoes. We rarely even wear shoes. There are, are so few places in the BBIs where you even have to wear shoes. So that's that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. I honestly we kick them off at the door when we. We first step on the boat, and I rarely put them back on the entire time we're there. 
So it's just a really light, um, you know, you need some shorts, maybe a sundress, um, and obviously a swimsuit for every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two, two of them for guys. Two swimsuits well, for guys. No, <laughs> we need more than that. Uh, no, but yeah, so I used to tell people, like, for example, this last trip, when they asked, what, what should I pack? I would tell them, pack, take it all out, and just bring a quarter of it or half of it. You don't need all that stuff. I mean, we used to do it. We used to overpack and need a shirt for every day. Well, you're not going to change your shirt every day because you may not be wearing a shirt, sun shirts uh, nowadays, which are light to pack. But yeah, yeah pack light, sunscreen. Uh, what else? Yeah, sunscreen. Sunglasses. Those are probably hats, the two big ones. Maybe a hat. Um, when this one was small, the boats are so spacious that we were able to put up a pack and play for him to um, to lay in. So I. Wow. I loved having that when he was little. It was a lot more stuff when they were little, but um, it's really yep. streamlined since then. And and so once you do get there, um, you know you're you're at Nanny Key. Which tell them a little bit about what what kind of amenities Nanny Key has for you before you venture out into the islands. Yeah, so it's a full. You're, I see you're showing the picture of our fleet. We have a huge. This is the base. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the base. Uh, there, the, the location itself is fantastic. There are two restaurants on site. There's a beach. There's also a small grocery store. So if you did pre-order all your stuff, which I recommend, so you're not wasting your precious vacation time uh, shopping. But if you forgot something or you want to add something, there is a grocery, small grocery store on site where you can walk to and pick up any of those last minute items you might have forgotten, including sunscreen and some of those things. There's also a dive shop on site. I mean, it's it's everything's right there on site, so you really don't have to eat again. Also, cool. yeah, I was on that base, so really, really nice. <laughs> That's right. We do have uh, six or seven guest showers, so if you you know the day you come back, you want to take a real shower. On the uh, obviously, the, the the boats have showers, but if you mm -hmm. want space and, and take a land shower, it's a great thing to do before you get on the airplane to go home. A bigger guy will definitely miss a full <laughs> shower. So that is a highlight when I get off the boat, for sure. So and I, I know I noticed you guys have a sample itinerary too on the website, which is uh, when we're doing these, I always like to search the websites for all this really cool content too. And and what I saw was the sample itinerary. So um, you know, could you give us from from y'all's perspective? Uh, maybe what's your perfect sample itinerary for, for those watching out there? I think so. I, so I think we've only been to Anagata maybe half the times that we've gone to the BBIs because it takes a longer boat ride out there. But personally, I think it's worth the drive out there. I love Anagata. It has one of the greatest uh, snorkeling reefs in the world um and then again like the islanders there's like this oasis of hammocks out there it's kind of set apart from the rest of the islands so everybody on the island well on most islands everybody on the island already knows them. but specifically on anagata from side to side everybody knows everybody taking the open air jeeps to the other side of the island or the normal mopeds definitely one of my favorites so i think that's a day that I highly recommend. Yeah, and as far as the itinerary goes, you have to kind of watch the weather because you know the it might be a little rougher to get out there, and it does take a little more time. So you might have to plan two days to get mm -hmm. out there and back. Not two full days, but maybe a day and a half. In your it's itinerary. about an hour and a half to get out there, depending on conditions. So it's not that far of a journey, but if you go out there, you want to get there early so you can go explore the island with the mopeds like they have in the past with the open your Jeep and uh, But you, I mean, if you go out there, you have the time, so I would go longer than six days, maybe stay two nights out there and stargazing out there is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of the itinerary, we put a sample in there, mm -hmm. but it's really a sample, because like Kelly said, depending on if you can change, depending on who you're with, it may change. So, you know, some people just want to go to the beach bars, some people want to go hiking. So it depends. There's so much that the BBIs offer that you, your itinerary changes every single time. So, but typically you would start at our base, probably sleep the first night, get accustomed to it, put everything away, 
take off early in the morning. There's a cruise anchor, which is about 40 minutes away from Cuba, to uh, Norman Island. So you can see two great snorkel spots here, the caves and the Um uh, The caves, I saw Adam when he was probably 11, walk on water there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I never forget that time. Me <laughs> it was the very first time he saw a barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! He's, he's, he's pointing at him because they love sitting underneath the boat, and I all of a sudden he's like gone. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I ran funny. out of the water. I literally, <laughs> and I, on, on one side of the boat that has ladders, there's another that doesn't, and I jumped out of the water <laughs> onto the other side with no ladder. Oh, I was terrified. Hilarious. But that's a great snorkeling spot. Mm -hmm. There's a book written about the hidden treasure of the caves. Um, there's a great restaurant there on site, beautiful location, nice little beach. So that's a great spot to just start and start unwinding. Then head out early in the morning, go to the baths, or at least we have time to go hike to the top, have lunch up there, come back down. And then typically we would go around to Gorda Sound uh, to either Mother Bay or or you guys talk about the bitter end. Mm. What and, about the bitter end? And when you're talking about these places, these are all relatively close by, right? I mean, it's something, and these are all in a way different islands or different areas of larger islands. So they're all pretty close by boat, right? Oh yeah, 30 minutes maybe. And you're never really in open water. It's, it seems to be very protected. Um, you know, it's not rough. Uh, rarely have we, and we've been going for, you know, 22 years, rarely have I seen rough, rough seas down there, which amazes me. But um, Alex, what did you like about the Bitter End? Do you remember the Bitter End Yacht Club? It's been a couple of years, obviously. Hobie Cats, yeah. speak up. The Hobie Cats. So we have had the, the privilege to get lessons at the uh, bitter end on how to drive the little Hobie cats, which are basically flat, small little sailboats. Oh yeah. So I'm not sure if Lauren ever got lessons, but at least Adam and I got to go to a little like day camp where we got to learn how to sail them. And so every year since then, we get to rent the Hobie cats from the bitter end and kind of sail our own way in the little bay, um, which is always an adventure, getting the three of us, four of us to work together to sail a boat to get somewhere. Um, we actually got to plant co coconuts yeah. one, like the first time we ever went out on this little island. And ever since then, we look for our coconut tree and in the midst of a million coconut trees. <laughs> Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> and the amazing part is that they just go by themselves. Um, you know, I know there's not a whole lot where they could get lost, or I don't feel like they're well, not right. safe. <laughs> yeah, there's know, no way. We've been stuck out there swim. just trying to push ourselves. <laughs> well, there's always someone who would come out and get yes. you if they needed yes. to, or we could yes. hop on the dinghy and go get them if we needed to. So, you know, it was just a, a great way for them to learn their independence, um, you know, just to be able to go and do, you know, there's, we don't let kids just run anymore. Um, it seems the world has changed so much since I grew up and they're able to just, you know, be by themselves and, you know, learn how to flip a boat if they have to, you know, get back on or, um, you know, just be together as well as siblings and learn how to get along as well. So I don't know, it's just indescribable. I have to say this, Kelly was talking about rough conditions. It can get rough yeah. sometimes in the winter months. Yeah. This is a person that gets seasick standing on a dock. <laughs> <laughs> and she forces us to go on these vacations. I mean, it's not very difficult, but that's how much she loves it. So Everyone should have C-bands with them. <laughs> C-bands, yeah. And so, uh, oh, let me see. Uh, we got a lot of you, so I just want to make sure everybody's in. So what about the boats too? Um, we haven't really discussed uh, what what boats are in the lineup for Marine Max vacations. And while you talk about that, I'll, I'll bring up some of the other the options as you discuss them. So so what can they expect when it comes to what they can stay on? Well, I'll take that one. Uh, we typically, because we have so many of us, we end up on our largest boat right now. And there's a new one coming out. It's a 48 footer, four stateroom with four heads. So every cabin has its own private head. 
uh, lots of storage space, huge galley, uh, salon where we can all sit around and play cards with, like we do at night. There is a TV, we've never turned it off. <laughs> Uh, so there's plenty to do. So the 48 is it's the biggest one right now. We're actually mm -hmm. coming out, and I can't wait, with a 54 foot. Ah. Five cabins. And that will be coming down to the islands as well? Yes, that will be there starting in October, November time frame. So as it gets closer, be on the lookout. I don't think we even have it on the website yet. But so it's, it's fantastic for four couples or a family or even two small families because you have the four staterooms. The salon does convert, so you can put two more in the middle. And actually, most of the new ones have a little skipper cabin up front where you can put a kid, put somebody up there. Uh, but plenty of space. Um, yep. It, uh, so, yeah. Uh, the flybridge is massive. That's where we eat most of our meals. And then a great thing about the Marine Max boats, the Akiva Power Cats, is the easy access from the flybridge down to the bow so like on the 48 there are two different sets so you don't have to you're not going to miss anybody going down the steps and around the boat like a, a typical boat there's a salon it's massive in the galley it's so easy to cook and get around there i mean three of us can be in there cooking um making so, stuff, making yeah we see an image of the galley here so i mean just the amount of space you got uh to, to put all your provisions away um and, and also just uh, the cooking space you have for multiple people even i mean a lot of apartments it's hard to uh to have multiple people in the kitchen at once it looks like this is pretty spacious yeah what i love is that we can be cooking and everyone else can be playing cards on the table that you can see in the background back there um on that last view yep but there's two refrigerators. Yeah. Um, I, I remember being able to store a lot uh, of food. It's easy, even for a short person like myself, it's easy pretty much to get to, to everything um, that you have, all your spices, your dishes. But back in the background there, you can see the table and the kids often will sit, although they're not kids anymore they need to start helping us more <laughs> i'm kidding but um you know they could they i just have memories of them playing card games and, and board games there as i was cooking There's, or getting uh, ready for dinner that picture right there is of one of the cabins it looks like the bow the front cabin and you can see how spacious you can actually get to the bed from multiple places so you're not climbing mm -hmm. on top of somebody to get into the cabin I think that's the one I lost Alex in. He was covered under the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's something to be said, too, about just the amount of storage space. People talk about storage space. I see. I, I feel like too much about boats. But, I mean, on this, when you're on a vacation on a boat, you need that kind of space to, to put all your stuff away, get it away so you guys can move around. And, and it clearly shows in some of these images here. Yeah, where you're moving the mouse up there, those are all storage bins. I mean, and on top of that, there's some closets in the front part of the, the boat. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you just showed another one, too. On these 48s, the aft cabins, you can either make them split like that. So we would do that when when we would go with these guys if they were sharing a cabin. So the aft cabins could either be split like that or they, they come together and make a, a double. So if you do have, you know, singles, or kids and you want that, just let your vacation planner uh, know that do you want the bed split and they'll have it set up for you that way. So this is a gorgeous photo. What are we looking at here, Raul? So that is uh, one of Kelly's favorite spots is the flybridge. It's massive. So that's where we typically eat all, eat all our meals. Uh, you can see how easy it is. In fact, you can see on the right hand side of the very stairs are the steps going down to the bow so it's very easy that little seat up front the kids love sitting up there uh but it's massive flybridge we spent the evenings up there just looking at the horizon watching sunsets that table probably sits i don't know we've had more than 12 around that table before uh and the flybridge of the 48 it's massive there it is so oh and there's sarah many years ago in the corner in the blue shirt we User as a model before. <laughs> yeah. So those 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 uh that table it kind of folds up to add more space on there. Is that what that yeah. is? So it's got two leaves that open up when you're ready to eat, or otherwise you put them down and you see all the space you have around. I mean, the the photo doesn't do it justice. Really, it is massive. Wow. 
And then the transom, the, the aft part of the boat is it's also massive. You can see the nice big wide steps, the ladder, it's easy to get in and out of the water if you're snorkeling or diving. Um, yeah, there's four pictures of the, the Oh, and then we, we can't, before we move on to the next model, we can't uh, not talk about the bar area back here. So what, what are we seeing here? So the newer 48s, uh, so not all of them have the bars, but most of them have the bar window back there. So that's the galley and it opens up and you have two bar stools. That's one of my favorite places to hang that's out spot. when the kids are out in the water. Um, so it's, it's fantastic. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and when that bar is open, the breeze just goes right through the uh, the kitchen area there. It's so, um, I just love having the kids sitting there. You know, we can make some rum runners or whatever it is that we're, drinks we're mixing up for the day. And um, yeah, that's I a good cooking. point. You don't have to have AC all the time because there's a front door. There's a, mm -hmm. in the bow of the boat, you can open that up, open the slider and that breeze just goes through there. It's, it's, it's incredible. That's so cool. It's definitely an incredible vessel. Um, so that's the four stateroom version. Do we have, what's the next step down if you don't need that much space? So the next one is the 44 footer. It's a three stateroom. It's got a massive uh, king size bed in the front and the bow. Uh, and then two very nice staterooms similar to the ones in the 48. Big flybridge again. The Aquila feature of access, there it is. That one, they, all the 44s do have the bar and seating area aft where you can see the seating back there and then the kilo feature yep there yep. you go and then that was got outside steps to get up to the fly bridge but you know sitting back there in that bar is really cool that, that seating area and, and then the steps you, that those steps right there seem pretty functional too just uh to get down what is that to get to the, like the swim platform to get up, the, i'm sorry the, the so you're you're up an anchor or picking up a mooring ball which all the kids that's their job picking up the mooring balls it is so easy because you're they're in, they don't have to run back and down and around and in fact you can also use it as a see there you go that's the view of it and you can see there are a lot of holding uh places where you can hold on to and then the seats in the front but uh yeah it's it's very easy to get around um that's where the what do you guys do up there when you're up there Lauren. <laughs> For girls especially, we love to tan up there. <laughs> so And the little seats up there. Yeah, sitting on those seats when you're driving the boat. At first, when you're little, it might be a little scary, but it's one of the best seats on the whole boat. Just <laughs> feeling the wind through your hair and watching the water go under you. It's incredible. That's awesome. Dolphin. Yeah. I can remember many turtles, a time. Dolphin. Adult turtles. We spot many a... Many an animal up there. There's a galley, <laughs> refrigeration. And this uh, and just the seating area. So this also shows uh, the the master. Um, could you tell us a little bit about uh, kind of like down here too? Just so you, you got the yeah. area to hang out, have dinner and stuff uh, if you want to eat indoors, but also just, you know, the location next to the master there. Yeah. So you got the salon right there where you can, food, you know, or if it does rain, you can be indoors and you still have a place to uh, to hang out. And uh, again, very easy access for all the cabins. So the forward cabin, uh, where you can see the, the cushions up there, that's a big cabin. It's a full side, the full beam as a cabin, their own private bathroom or head uh, on the port side of the boat, uh, king size bed. It's really neat. And all these boats have been set up. There it is. Massive. It's, it's incredible. And then the starboard side is a little seating area, desk area. Uh, or makeup station if you want. Two huge lockers up there too. Um, we also sell these boats privately. Uh, yeah. Retail. So it's a great boat for people that are going to live aboard. Yeah. So hi, I know uh, that that's a, a program you guys. So tell us about that program and how you can kind of, you know, have a boat where you can have it down in the islands, but also uh, let others use it as well when, when you're not using it. Yeah. It's the easiest way to own a yacht down on the island. So the program we have is you buy the boat, so it's one owner per boat, it's not timeshare. Um, you get to use the boat up to nine weeks a year, depending on how you use it. And on top of that, we cover all operating expenses, maintenance, dockage, insurance. You have zero out-of-pocket expense while the boat is in the fleet. 
And on top of that, we guarantee your payment every single month whether the boat charters or not. So we take the risk on whether the boat is going to charter enough to cover all expenses. You get to name the boat. And there's some great names for the boats. Uh, we do have to approve them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you get to name the boat Hailing Port. It's your boat. When you go use it, you know, it's not part of, uh, of uh, joy of taking your friends on your own boat. But when you're not using it, it's producing revenue, and we're taking care of it for you. Very cool. Well, that's great. I mean, it's uh, it's something that you, you have to experience, uh, you know, working with Marine Max. It's been a pleasure to be down in the islands, and I wish I could just convey uh, how much fun it is, just like you guys all all know for sure, uh, to, to the people out there. And, of course, you know, check out uh, YouTube. Our YouTube channel for Marine Max Vacations has a ton of stuff, um, which I'm going to kind of play a video while we wrap up here um, that, that kind of gives you that feeling of being in the islands. Um, but check it out. There's there's information on all this stuff, charter yacht ownership, um, different locations around the islands, training, because there's a lot of systems on the boats that people need to get uh, to learn about, right? Um, and they can actually do that before they get down to the islands. So they're completely up to speed by the time they get there and they're saying, hey, I know how to connect my uh, phone to Bluetooth here and play all the tunes on the on the boat, right? Most important That's thing. a good point, yeah. That's, <laughs> That's Adam. what I would take down. <laughs> That's Adam's shop. It's bring the music. <laughs> the one thing you do need your phone for, other than taking pictures, of course, is to play the tunes when you get on the boat. We forgot to mention a couple of other great locations before we, we go. We forgot, sure. Uh, um, I just forgot the name of it. Scrub Island. Scrub. It's yep. a great spot to stop to go to dinner, and the kids love using the pool and the slides. We talked about Anagata. Uh, Yosemite Dyke, we talked about a couple of the places. Well, Cooper Island's another great location. Yeah. Uh, great food, unbelievable. And it's a natural resort, uh, Cooper. But yeah. Scrub is a nice spot. You wanted our itinerary. We usually save at least two days for White Bay because okay. it's Dollar Bar is on one side, Ivan Stress Free on the other side. Um, and there's a spa there now, too. I know there's a spa, which I haven't tried out yet. I'm going to have to do that. There's so many spots. Cane Garden Bay is another anchorage. I mean, as you can hear, we've been going to Bay. We've been going 20 years. I've been going, I mean, many times. And I yep. still have to eat all the spots. I mean, wow. this time I found a new place on Virgin Gorda. A place called Hog Heaven, a restaurant. Ah, I've yes. I've been there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, there's so much. And every once in a while, Foxy's, you got to go check out Foxy's Taboo. I mean, there's so many places you'll never get tired of it. That's why we go back all the time. Oh, Pirates. We haven't even talked about Pirates. pirates we spent Norman. many a day at Norman Island. Yeah. Um, so, it's one of the great things. You're not going to get tired of it. You're going to want to go year after year. And that's why the ownership program is great, too, because people think, oh, how many times can I really do that? And I'll tell them this story. And if yeah. they've been before they know. I mean, that's what it's all about. And you're going to get into anchorages. Cruise ships can only dream of going into it. And you're not, you know, the other beauty of this vacation is you're not going to have to get back on the ship by five o'clock or they're going to leave you. You're in charge. You get to say, last time we went, we were, I forgot where we were. And she said, why do we have to move? Why can't we just stay here? Yeah. I'm like, oh, and we stayed another night. So yeah. it's very relaxing. You're in control. Um, yeah, you get to see things. Cruise, cruise ship people. We'll never see. Them. Right. And I think one thing that I I don't know that we covered is who drives the boat? Oh, good oh. question. So there are different ways you can do it. I forgot to mention the smaller boat, too. We do have a 36-footer, two-cabin boat. Uh, so it's great for one couple or a couple of people or just two couples. It's a fantastic boat, 36-footer, mm -hmm. without much. So if you're used to driving outboards, that's good. So you can do it different ways. You can uh, captain yourself if you have the experience. Similar size boat. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Do I need a license?" Not necessarily a license. Um, it's great if you do have one, but we ask you questions about your experience, how many times you've been overnight, do you know how to read a chart, that sort of stuff. We do have support at the base. There's a uh, a whole team, we have about 40 staff members down there that if you do get in trouble, you can call them and they'll walk you through it. Or if they can't walk you through it, they'll go out and, and fix it for you. But yeah, so you can do it yourself. You can hire a captain, we've, which we've done a lot of times. If we don't want to deal with the stress, especially when the kids were even younger, you know, you're watching kids, you don't want to be worried about 
driving them where they are. And then we've also done her favorite, which is <laughs> a full crew with a cook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you can do all inclusive, captain, cook, all the meals, all the drinks. They ask you your preference sheets, and you, you can tell about that experience how they can make like it. Yeah, it just right. takes all the stress out of it for me, um, not having to cook. But as the kids get older, it gets easier and easier um, with that. We did that a lot when they were younger. Um, would have that full crew so that we could relax as well and not have to have any any type of stress at all. Yeah. It's awesome. It's great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, before we leave here today, uh, we'd like to just go through one more time and say, you know, one thing, first memory that pops in your mind that, about the British Virgin Islands that, you know, you'd, you'd want to share to somebody else who's never done this before. You know, one thing that you just remember, we'll go around, we'll start, we'll start with Alex. How about that? Um, one time we were on wasn't blowing. And we were just thinking about sharks and stuff. And then we were like, there's no sharks in the BVIs. And then I look down and see a shark right under our OB cat. And I'm like, are you sure? And, and then we started singing, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> and up there. Oh, that's funny. That's, that's awesome. I think... For me, we started this thing called a noodle race. Um, when we were little, we would dig holes and put noodles like an arch, and we'd make a whole obstacle course on the beach, and we'd do it for hours going in and out and racing each other. So that was fun. We can't really fit through noodles anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I think there's a lot of like adventurous and fun things that you can do in the BBIs, but I think my favorite things to do are just to relax and lay on the beach. And just look at the islands. It's beautiful. It's not like any beach that we have in America. So <laughs> never forget those beaches. Um, I we've I've been lucky enough to be there during the World Cup. Um, and some of the pubs where I mean, when I was like Alex's age, fourteen years old, walking into these British pubs and having all the locals there, it, that is the most hype soccer environment you could ever wish to be in. So. <laughs> I always remember that when I think of the BBIs. Awesome. I've been stress-free bar, the uh, the tire swing that the kids used to, to swing on every year. That's a memory I'll never forget. Gosh. I know. For me, it's just being with them. I mean, probably the first time we took them down there and watching their faces, and like, ah. Or when they <laughs> come back with the uh, Hobie cat and just those big smiles are amazing. So, yeah, a lot of memories, a lot of good places. Going Great. to the top of the Lisa, what about you? What is your number one uh, thought from being down in the islands? I think I'm muted. Am I muted? No. You're, You're good. there. Okay. Um, my number one thought, I mean, jumping off of Willie T's. <laughs> I mean, falling off, falling off. I fell no. off. Um, that was just, uh, Raul, you mentioned it earlier. It was, it's just an interesting experience yeah. and it is, it's, it doesn't feel like it's that far, but man, does your heart go into your throat? Uh, <laughs> and cause you can see all the way to the bottom of, of the ocean and you jump off and it just, you climb out and everybody's cheering you on and you can get a, a painkiller and you know, cheers your mates. That was a, a really fun experience. I will never forget that. That's great. Kelly yeah. Berry, your turn. Sun sunsets in the islands. That's it. Basically sitting on the boat, watching the sun go down in silence, basically, is, is what <laughs> you can come to expect. So, well, wow. if you'd like to learn more, of course, uh, where can they learn more, Lisa? They can learn more at marinemaxvacations.com and, of course, at marinemaxvacations on all the social media platforms. Um, as you can imagine, Instagram is a beautiful uh, thing to follow just because the British Virgin Islands are so gorgeous. Everywhere you look is a picturesque moment. And you know what? Pictures don't do it justice. So you got to hit the website, book your own trip. Raul and his team will walk you through the entire planning process. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, there are training videos online. So any question you have, they're prepared to answer. 
Um, it's an amazing, amazing experience. And Bermuda's family, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. You have so much to celebrate, not only being such a, a close-knit family, but we've got high school graduation, college graduation, engagement, anniversary. And, and, and it's it's crazy. So um, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And we're going to end on a, a video that we think uh, will definitely get people excited to uh, get down in the islands. So uh, without further ado, well, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Unplug, unwind, and discover the trip of a lifetime. In the British Virgin Islands, get closer to the things that matter, your friends and family. Create magical moments and lifelong memories. Untouched beauty, unique landscapes, pristine waters, long sandy beaches, and abundant animal life. Experience it up close, personally and vividly. Adventure seekers of all ages delight in snorkeling, scuba, paddle boards, kayaks, sailing and hiking. With over 60 islands to explore, fabulous dining and entertainment options, you'll wonder if you should ever go home. Experience the British Virgin Islands with Marine Max Vacations, aboard the newest fleet of award-winning Aquila Power Catamarans. Two, three and four bedroom models with air conditioning, private bathrooms in each cabin and water makers. Life aboard is comfortable and convenient. Voted number one BVI charter company multiple times, Marine Max Vacations earned this recognition with exceptional service. From your first contact to the last, our professional charter planners will help arrange everything from food to fun. Our staff will prepare your vessel, provide local knowledge, and a friendly greeting. While you're far from home, friends are close by should you need anything. Drive yourself, let us provide a skipper, or indulge yourself with our all-inclusive crude charter with a full-time professional captain and culinary chef. The water is warm, the winds are calm, the scenery is spectacular, and our fleet of boats and team are the best in the islands. The only thing missing is you. Learn more at marinemaxvacations.com or speak to one of vacation planning experts at 813-644-8071.